Doing great. Man, you're just all about casual Fridays. I well, I, I've got my um, my sport coat on. Um, would you like a tie? Well, I mean, you're kind of an attorney if you're in the court, so yeah. If you'll excuse me for just a minute, I will um, make that happen. Okay, and then Miss Mountain is present, so is Miss Daniel. Good morning to this honorable court. Carla Marable, P number 62755, on behalf of the defendant. Mr. Napper, right. please state your full name for the record. Daniel Okay, I couldn't understand him. Uh, state your name again, sir. Daniel Napper. All right. Uh, Mr. Napper, I apologize. I did not call all of your cases, all of your charges. You also have a count two, reckless driving causing death. Count three, operating while license suspended, revoked, denied, causing death. Count four, weapons, carrying, concealed. All right, those are all of your charges, sir. All right, uh, uh, who's uh, representing the people? That would be uh, me, Your Honor. Okay, all right. All right, Ms. Marable? Your Honor, this is a um, bond reconsideration, and we're asking for a 10% provision of this bond. The purpose of bond is twofold, that um, the protection of society and that the person shows up, the second is that the person shows up for court and goes to their court dates. I don't believe that he's a flight risk, Your Honor. Um, he's 20 years old. He lived his whole life in the city of Detroit. Um, his parents and family ties is here. And I always like to mention that when people are young, they don't have the resources to maybe flee. So I don't believe that he's a flight risk. I don't believe that he's a danger to society. He has no prior criminal record, no um, abusive record or anything like that. Um, and he no longer, um, if you were asking for a 10% provision for the bond, um, he would not be driving. Um, I did give you, Mr. Um, Napper is unique in the sense that he has a unique medical condition and being in the Wayne County Jail is very um, hard for him medically. Um, he takes a special medication and I spent all weekend trying to get Wayne County Jail to get the medication. On Saturday, I was able to talk to the nurse and they ordered it. Um, they still won't have it until like Wednesday. So we're not, and I know that this is a very serious case. I told the family, we're not asking for a personal bond. What we're asking for is a 10% provision on the 50,000. Anything? Yeah, that's going to be my case here. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, as the court's aware, the, the consideration that the court looks at is, is danger to the community and flight risk. Uh, you know, obviously, count one is fleeing and eluding in the first degree, that being fleeing from a police officer, that flight resulting in the death of another individual. In this case, that individual was an uninvolved motorist simply traveling down uh, Chrysler Drive next to the highway. Um, I can tell the court I've seen the video of this case. The entire thing is caught on video. Uh, Mr. Knapper confesses to, to everything as well. Um, when police first see Mr. Knapper driving his vehicle, he's doing speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour in a 55. He's bobbing and weaving through vehicles. Uh, once the officer uh, initiates his lights, that's when Mr. Knapper decides that he's going to cut across all four lanes of traffic, uh, jumps the, the exit berm, uh, and then striking the uninvolved motorist in this case. So uh, he's clearly a flight risk. He's demonstrated that uh, with the facts of this case. And I think he's a danger to the community in the sense that not only has his license been previously suspended, but he's driving recklessly while fleeing from the police. So um, for those two reasons, Your Honor, I think the $50,000 cash bond is actually inadequate. Um, I would ask the court for a $100,000 bond, no 10%. Uh, if the court is not inclined to do that, um, I would just ask the court, um, I don't believe on the current bond conditions, there is a GPS tether requirement. Uh, if the court is not inclined to reduce bond, I would ask the court for a GPS tether with full hours of restriction. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Attorney Marable. 
So, Your Honor, the purpose, the prosecutor. No, no, no. I have a que- I have a question for you. Uh, yes. Attorney <laughs> the charge of fleeing indicates that the person is a flight risk because that's what this charge is. Would you not agree with that? When I think of flight risk, Your Honor, I think of moving out of state, not going to court. That's my... No, no, no. no. Flight risk means you could be hiding in your cousin's basement. That does not mean you got to go out of state. It just means you make yourself unavailable to the court. Okay. That's what flight risk is. It means you don't want to face your responsibility. That's what fleeing is. That's the original charge. And a danger to the community, that's reflected in the result in this fleeing. I mean, I I don't understand how you can say he's not a flight risk if he's fleeing and he's not a danger to the community if he's killed someone. Okay. Well, Yana, at this time, it's all allegations. Okay? Yeah, but apparently apparently it's on video, so it's a very strong, it's not whimsical. You know, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to reduce the bond. I will, because um, I, I I don't think there's anything any more dangerous than that. You know, people talk about people who discharge a weapon in a neighborhood or in a city and how likely that is to uh, cause harm, immediate harm or even death to someone. A car is a very, very big bullet. It is It is more likely to hurt someone and hit someone than a bullet is. Uh, unless someone's sh- shooting into a crowd, just just a person who just discharges a weapon in the city limits, yeah, that's 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 very dangerous. But a person who drives a the victim, how, how old was the victim? Uh, Your Honor, the victim in this case was fifty nine years of age. Hmm. And I have no idea if the victim has a family, he has a wife, he has children, he has someone who will never see him again. I don't think there's anything any more dangerous than this council. What would cause this person to flee? What was this person doing in the first place? Just doing donuts or just speeding and decided that they did not want to submit or or or, or yield to the officer? That they thought that they had the ability to do some, some uh, uh, what? what's the movie? Uh, fast and furious, and they, they can elude and get away from the police because they got these amazing skills. Um, yeah, he, this is a, a boundary. I think... I know what it is. I know why I'm here. I, okay, Your Honor, yes. when I think of fleeing, I think, you know, he's going to show up for his court dates. He's not a I, 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 risk in the sense that he's not going to show up for his court dates. What does what have, tell, I, what, 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 you make a statement? What demonstrates to me that he's not going to show up? His family is going to make sure that he shows up for his court date. I don't. Yeah. I don't see a family member here telling me that they're ensuring that he's going to be here. How, how do I know he's going to be? He's going to be honor, His mother is on. Um, you know, the attorney, only attorneys are supposed to use the Zoom. His mother's on YouTube. Would you like to speak with her? She can get um, here. She's she's on no, YouTube now looking at no, it. No, no, I don't I don't need that because uh, a mother's love tells me exactly what I know or I believe she's going to say. I really see a mother come out here and say, oh, my baby is dangerous and he's not going to come back. I'm never going to hear that. But that doesn't ensure to me that he is going to return because I don't know that she even has any control. Does she? Li- does he live with his mother now? Yes, he does. <laughs> so she didn't provide any influence that would cause him not to do this. So what, what's going to change? Your Honor, we also, you could give a 10% provision of the bond and a tether and make a home arrest and just allow him to go back and forth to his doctor appointments, which are many. If you look at the paperwork, he's up for a transplant, Your Honor.
Because, Your Honor, you could give him a 10% provision, tether, home arrest, and he can only go to court and doctor appointments. All right. What is his bond now? $50,000 cash? Yes. I'm going to make it $100,000, 10%. $100,000, 10%. GPS. Okay. And uh, he's going to be restricted to, he's not in school or anything like that. Uh, no, he's 35, you said. All right. Doctor in court. That's it. That's the, um, anything other than that, he's going to be rearrested. He's going to be held. Okay. So it's $100,000, 10%. Um, tether and home confinement. Correct. Exactly. He has nothing else that you're going to describe to me that he needs to go to. He's not in school. He's not. Uh, he does Dr. work. Your Honor. He does work. Um, he works at a um, doing the oil changes, but um, I don't know if he still has the job. So do, do y'all want long, him to work? When did this incident occur? Oh, this incident occurred earlier this week, I think like Thursday, correct? It'd be Mr. December Anderson. the 11th is the date of our offense. Okay. No. Doctor offices, hospital appointment, uh, medical appointments, and court. That's it. Okay. Thank you, God. I have a great Christmas. You Thank you, well. Mr. Anderson, can you send me the um, discovery? I don't. I didn't do the arraignment. Um, I was just retained over the weekend. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll get that to you. Information yeah. that I had no clue of. I'm, I'm looking at this in, in isolation, so I certainly can't do that. Good morning. What's your name, please? Good morning. My name is Nancy Long. Could you say it again? Nandy Long. N-A-N-D-I. Hello, Angie. Is that Nandy Long? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Ms. Long? Yes, sir. State your full name, please, for the record. Mandy Talia Nakia Long. All right. Ms. Uh, Long, I am, well, you have case number 2306048001, the people versus Nandy. N A N D I. Last name is uh, T. I have to strike that. Middle name is T A L I G A H N I K Y A. Last name is Long. L O N G. Miss Long, you're charged with. Three counts. Count one, home invasion in the first degree, punishable by a maximum of 20 years. Count two, lawful, unlawful imprisonment, punishable by a maximum of 15 years. And count three, also unlawful imprisonment, again, punishable by a maximum of 15 years. You're also served with the habitual offender second offense notice, Ms. Law. Counsel? Judge, good morning. It's an absolute pleasure. Steve Vincent for the people. He's 719. Right, on behalf of Mr. Long, Your Honor, uh, was here for bond redetermination. Yes, counsel. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I apologize. No, 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 no. I was just uh, uh, saying you, uh, you can make your argument. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, Ms. Long is, is 26 years of age. Um, she's employed at Popeye's. She works uh, every day. Um, you know, Judge, obviously she has the two children, um, which are currently now in foster care, and they have a, a current guardian, uh, which definitely which relates to the case that we have before us. Judge, it's alleged that uh, my client, you know, was, was given permission, uh, I guess, you know, after talking with the guardian to actually come and see the kids now. I don't know what other order there is in place, but I'm assuming that the order is for her not to have contact uh, with the kids either alone or either at all, Judge. I don't know what the order says. But regardless of that, the allegations of that, my client came over to the residence, the door was open, and 
and she uh, went in to try to see the kids, wanted to see the kids. You know, I know she's a mother, um, you know, and she loves her kids. Judge, but I don't, you know, I don't know what the orders say now. And I don't know about a second person. Uh, they talk about a second person, a male. Nobody, and, uh, well, nobody there. Oh, it's long, it's long. Hold on, we don't, we don't, want, we don't talk. Uh, you know, so I don't know about a second person, Judge, whatsoever that, that they talk about. I do know that we have certain rules that we have to go by. And in terms of, of how we, we have to conduct ourselves, especially when there are court orders in place. Now, I don't know, you know, about what the order said again, but I will point out that Brother Council is going to point out that back in October. Uh, uh, well, you, you, know, you can let Brother Council make his own argument. <laughs> well, I, I am, Judge, but I, I, I kind of know how <laughs> Brother Council is There is a custodial interference uh, case that, that Ms. Long had. And, and Judge, all of these cases, you know, center around her children and her love for her children. Now, you know, is she a danger to the community? I don't think so. I think that, that you know, maybe she's passionate about being a mother. Now, unfortunately, there was some, some circumstances that got allowed her kids to be taken out of her custody. Now, and, and that's something she has to work on. Um, but in this case, her bond is half a million dollars with the GPS tether, home confinement. Um, you know, I'm asking the court judge to reduce it um, you know, and even put a, maybe a tether on her so that she had, she's restricted. So she can't go to certain places and we have to monitor where she is. So if she does leave out of a certain area or go a certain place, the tether will go off. You know, she can't go to where the children are. And that's just what it is. So I'm asking for a reduction in bond. Um, time, Council, before Brother Council speaks, yes, she, has an habitual, she has an habitual offender charge. Correct. And that is and that is kidnapping. Is that the it, her, kidna ch her child? Custodial. That's out in Sixth Circuit, Judge. Uh, custodial. Children. Correct. Judge. And I'm just saying the, the quote unquote victim in that case is her child. That is my understanding. That is correct. John. Okay. Counsel. All right, Judge. Uh, let's clear up some things again. So the, um, that conviction uh, that Brother Counsel was just talking about, the kidnapping custodial interference out of Oakland, this defendant ended up pleading to that October 24th of this year. She has sentencing January 30th of 2024. So she's on bond right now awaiting sentencing for that January date. There was actually a pretrial that was supposed to be held in that case the day before this incident, the defendant failed to appear. Because I didn't, so know, I didn't know I had court. I didn't know oh, I had court. Long. So what we're going to do, we can't, we cannot respond, we cannot talk to court. You know, okay. please remain okay. silent. Okay. Ma'am, ma 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 let me help you understand something. You have an attorney who is going to speak for you. Okay. If you keep blurting out and you say something that can hurt your case because you're not trained in the law, are you are you trained in the law? No. All right, then I suggest that you listen to your attorney and you remain quiet because if you okay. say something that I hear that goes against you, it will be used against you. Okay. Counsel. Thank you, Judge. Um, bench warrant out for her arrest out of Oakland for the failure to appear case. Now, let's get to what Mr. Reagan did talk about, because there's a family court case going on, a custodial case. So the Honorable Judge Kavanaugh over in Circuit Court in Oakland, eight days before this incident, ended up issuing an order. And that order, and I want to get this right, Judge, specified that the defendant was not to have custody of the children. This is why. Due to her presenting a substantial risk of harm to the children's life, physical health, and well-being. That was an order that was signed by Judge Kavanaugh December 4th, 2023. This incident, Judge, takes place nine days later. So we have her on bond for the one case. We have an order that says she's not fit to be with these two kids. Let's get to the allegations here. And I don't, I, Mr. Reagan knows how much I appreciate him and respect him for the way that he goes about attacking these cases. But this whole idea of permission to see the kids, 
That's the proverbial slinging something on the wall and seeing if it'll stick. Because there was no permission whatsoever, Judge. And I think everybody knows that there's a guardian for these two kids. That guardian, after a substantial amount of talk with this defendant, allowed the defendant to come and drop something off at the front door. This defendant comes with another individual, knocks on the door repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Finally, the door is left open by the guardian. They push their way in. And guess what happens when they push their way in? Push grandmother aside, take the two kids. They take the two kids. The defendant takes the two kids. The two kids that Judge Kavanaugh had said you can't be with. The two kids that had to do with that kidnapping case over in Oakland County. She takes the two kids. The police end up tracking the defendant down as well as the other individual that was involved in this situation. That individual, the other individual, he has a gun. Police see him with a gun. He's walking down the stairs. He doubles back into the residence where the two kids are. Now we have a barricaded gunman situation where the two kids are with the defendant and the individual with the gun. Well, nobody in there. Ma'am, ma'am. I'm not going to say this again. I'm not. I didn't mean to talk. I want to talk to you. I was just talking out loud. I'm sorry. No, ma'am. You don't talk out loud because if you're not talking to me, then you don't. You could think to yourself. You okay. don't have to talk out loud. Okay. I'm sorry. 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 I'm so sorry. Judge, ultimately, the police were able to recover um, the two kids. The two kids being three years old and eight months old. Um, they were ended up, uh, they took those two kids. The defendant was arrested, Judge. She's here before you today. And Your Honor, I know you can appreciate this. I asked, this was my case at Arrayments, I asked for $500,000. I got $500,000. I think it was in front of the Honorable um, Magistrate Ramsey Heat. And she appreciated what was going on. Not to say Your Honor will or won't, but I kind of just wanted to put this all into context. She's not supposed to be with those kids. And she ended up taking those kids once again after a judge issued an order that said she wasn't fit. And she takes them. So those kids, judge, she's a danger to those two kids. And there's a capious history because she failed to appear for that free trial. So we got the double win. I mean, we got both. We got flight, we got danger, um, we have kids involved in this. We do feel as though that half a million dollars is appropriate. We have flight, we have danger. What we don't have is a psychological examination. I think that there should be a referral uh, to the forensic center to make a determination that she, whatever she does, it, it, that she not understands what she's doing. She understands the gravity, she understands the, the criminality, she understands the danger. And I don't think that she does. From what I'm hearing, it sounds like she needs to have a psychological examination counsel. And I think, there should be a, I think there should be a referral. Judge, can I just say something? And, and I'm yes. not a mother, but I am a father. And I, I do understand, you know, the love for your kids. I don't want to, you know, get too deep into it. But, you know, I know she had kids at three years old, eight months old. Eight months old is it's fairly new. I know that people go through postpartum. They go through different situations. Um, but I know she she loves her kid, Judge. So, but I do understand. I do understand what the court is saying in terms of having to follow orders. And I do understand about the court in terms of some maybe mental situation that may be there, may not. I don't know. But um, I'm going to renew my motion, Judge, only because I think that um, you know, if you put a tether house arrest, I think, Judge, that hopefully this this can solve this particular situation and. The house of the tether judge won't allow her to come out the house to even go try to see the kids. She can't drop anything on the porch. She must stay within the four corners of her house. If she steps outside that house, boom, 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 the tether goes off. And she's arrested. Yes, me. yes counsel. The problem with that is tether goes off. That does not prevent her movement. So she can leave her home. Tether goes off. But... Uh, by the time the police arrive or send someone to pick her up, there could be some danger or some some injury that has already occurred. See, it doesn't stop or prevent her from doing anything. All it does is alert people that she alerts the authorities that she's left the house. But it, it lets the worst that, is that, the whole way. 
That's I, right. I understand that. I, I understand that, Council. But the tether unit and the people who's going to, I don't know that any particular time or day, how many people are available, how many tethers go off on other people, how quickly they can respond. I don't know that they could stop her actions from if she walks out of her house and she drives directly to where the children are, does that does that automatically mean that they can prevent some injury, some harm? It doesn't. It just means they've been alerted that she's left the place. Yes, it tells them where she is, but I don't necessarily know that that means that they have uh, X number of people, particularly on standby, that can respond immediately and prevent the harm. I don't know that. I apologize, defense counsel. And judge, that's only one aspect of it. You, you know what's reverberating in my head is Mr. Reagan just going to do, 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 because we had an individual that was with another individual that barricaded themselves inside of a house with a firearm. Do, 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 do. So she's already associated. Counsel, 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 just her response right now doesn't tell me that she's mentally sound. Just she's upset. I mean, I, she's got a half million dollar bond. Uh, she's sitting Brain jumps to the point. Yeah, I I put my head down too. It'd be a little, it'd be a little upset. No, 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 sir. I don't know that you would do that. But the problem is, is she's doing it, and 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 she's upset with what she's hearing, but she doesn't recognize that she's only here hearing this because of some of her actions. So you know, I I I, I, I that concerns me. It concerns me uh, again because. Like I said, tether doesn't prevent anything from happening. It just lets us know that somebody has taken a step outside of the boundary that has been imposed on them by the court. I understand, Judge. I do understand that, Judge. And I think that she was also saying that there wasn't a gun and that there wasn't any of the things that were in the report. Because it's a hearsay document, Judge. It's made to get probable cause to get charged. Charges made. I mean, it's it's not yeah. always, you know, truthful in its face. Okay. But it's what the court has to go by. And I understand yeah. that. Yeah, but, but counsel, we had a shooting in Oxford, and until that young man was convicted, it was an allegation. Right. So, so I, I'm just saying, yes, we can talk about these things, and then we can we can do a post-mortem of it and say, well, you know, I gave her a tether, and, 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 and the police could track her, but it didn't prevent an action. And that's my concern. I, I understand your concern, Judge. I, I just, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't I, necessarily see it, you know. And I respect this court. You know, I have so much respect for this court, Judge. And I, and I, and yeah, I we've just, known each other for a long time, Mr. Reagan. So, that's right. I, so, and you know, I would never do anything just because uh, I'm not afraid to reduce bond. Oh no, I know um, that, Your Honor. I, I absolutely uh, know that. And and and, but I am afraid when I think just based on what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, that there might be, she may be acting uh, in, in such a fashion or, or in a way because it is beyond her ability to control. Yes, I sir. understand a, a mother's love. I understand that. I understand you said you're a parent, I'm a parent. We understand, but I understand the limits of what I can do to see my child, or I understand if I've acted in such a fashion that uh, my custodial uh, rights have been restricted or taken away because of some actions. And I don't know what all of those actions are. What I'm hearing and seeing right now is limited. I'm sure I can talk to some agencies that could give me a whole other history, a long history of what is going on. I honestly, in my opinion, I think there should be a referral for some type of uh, mental uh, evaluation. Sir, thank you so much, Ron. I and appreciate it. And I think in the long run, counsel, as you go through this case, if you are uh, assigned any further than just doing these uh, bond determinations or hearings at this point, if this is going to be your case that's going to go to trial, I think it uh, should be a referral. And whoever um, who's going to have this case when it goes to trial, if it goes to trial, uh, there should be some type of a referral based on what I see right now. Thank you very much, sir. So, but at this point, and I, I think that's what should be done, and I'm I'm reluctant to make any changes until there is some type of uh, uh, referral to the forensic uh, center. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, I, I think the attorneys need to ask for it, but okay. so. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the next person that we. Oh, yes, right. Oh no, I was just saying good luck to you, Miss Lawrence. So. Okay. Count, so. Council, council, uh, do you're not going to have this case beyond here. No. You're not no, appointed, are you? Okay. Uh, do you think that there should be a referral that uh, you can ask for it now, and then we can get it in the works, and whoever gets assigned can take it from there? Well, Judge, I know that she has a, a signed lawyer, and it, it's it's I can't I can't I don't have my my computer to tell you, but I'm I'm sure that the lawyer is going to contact her within the next few days. Her next court date is December 28th, and I know that she's going to contact the lawyer. But I don't want to get because I'm not I'm not officially her okay. lawyer. Yeah, so, very well. Then I think it ought to be a note in the file that this court has suggested it. The defense attorney may not uh, want that. They may not believe that that's going to be something that's going to be beneficial to their client. But uh, that that there should be a hearing and there should be a determination if there's going to be a referral. Thank you. But until that happens, I, I'm not going to change the bond. Thank you, Governor. Okay. Okay. We have the next person that Wayne County Jail, please. First 